So today I just want to briefly talk about something, Adam and Eve. I had a I had a thought, um, I think it was last week about something. Actually, it was from my own experience that kind of filtered off into other things. And I, then I got to thinking about um, Adam and God, you know, you know, after he formed Adam and he breathed and, you know, the, the, you know, he became a living soul and all of that good stuff. And I was thinking about, man, what was what was the relationship like before the fall? Just Adam, you know what I mean? Adam and God, what was going on? Um, you don't really get a picture of Adam. Well, I should say the picture that you get from Adam and God is one of just a, a, a free flowing relationship. So God is there. Adam is there. Adam is there. God is there. There's, there's no struggle to reach God. And I know we can conceive that because you're like, well, yeah, that's before the fall. But if Jesus did what he did and it's already he paid for it and he, he resettled things. In essence, he he um, he gave God back what was God's, you know, the earth, you know, if you can say it that, that way. But he gave God back what was rightfully God's that Adam lost. So if that's true and accurate, then how would our relationship look like with God? What would it look like? You know, we get a picture. I heard this before. Actually, I feel like I heard something like this, like maybe a few days ago, somebody alluded to something. I can't remember verbatim what it was, but it was like, we, we live according to the old ways we we live according to the new testament i mean to the old testament or we we live and we think and we breathe and we move and we have our being from the old testament and really not from the new place you know the better covenant you, you know and and all of what that entails so it's kind of interesting to think about a relationship with God before the fall, what that would really look like, you know, fasting, you know, this type of ritualistic praying that we do, you know, Jesus even talked about that the Pharisees going on the, you know, standing on the street corners and, you know, they're saying all of these things and, and even down to fasting, they, they, you know, they, they go before people fasting and they look like, you know, they done been drugged through the mud because they want you to think, that they're actually doing something. And believe it or not, this is how we live a lot of our life. Even if we don't take on those specific looking dynamics. So maybe we wouldn't go outside dress crazy or just standing on a street corner. Well, yeah, we would. We would definitely do that. <laughs> to keep saying all these different words and these prayers because we do it because, you know, of, of the of the ears of men. But if we didn't have to do that, thinking that that's what God requires, then what would we be doing? What does it look like for us to be really connected to God in this specific way, in this, you know, in this non-religious, ritualistic, you know, type of way? So how was Adam's and God's relationship? The relationship wasn't one of hide and seek and see if you can find me. How the natural order between God and man should be one of unbroken connection. So Adam didn't have to fall on his face to pray. He didn't to fast and all of these things. And I know this is, you know, well, yeah, blah, 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 but just stay with me in order to hear and know God. He didn't have to do all of these things in order to hear and know God. This stuff came, remember, as a result of the fall. But again, we no longer are cursed or under that particular relationship dynamic with God. So what could it look like for you and me to commune with God in such a way that we don't feel we have to be worthy to find him or to be in his presence. He's our father. And this is how 
This is how really he had intended it. And this is how, you know, true relationship with him should be. So just think about it for, for a minute. And all of this that that we did, I talk about here on the on the God perspective is going somewhere. Even this moment that, that could sound like just talk and just ideas. Ideas are important and ideas. They they put you on specific foundations. So any idea coming through this platform is to give you a different idea or perspective around your walk with with God and even what God really requires or really wants from the relationship with you and me. You know, Jesus, again, is, is the example. We get this example when we when we read about the life of Jesus that, man, I you know, you know, Jesus goes off, you know, he takes he, he separates himself from the disciples and he goes off, you know, we'll pay more attention on on the time that Jesus goes off to commune with God. Oh, he went off at three in the morning and blah, blah, blah. Six in the morning he went out and he can he could commune with God instead of instead of honing in on the carefreeness and even the, the real intimacy of this particular relationship. Jesus goes off to talk to his father. You know, what, who, who knows what, what the conversation look like, but you get a sense. I think you can get a sense and feel of, man, you're, imagine you know that your parents are really loving parents and they really love you and they really want the best. And you guys are talking, you know, maybe you're talking over orange juice or coffee or whatever it is. And you just really feel connected and unified. You know, this is how it was all the time with Jesus and the father. So there, there wasn't there wasn't a lot that Jesus had to do outside of just truly believing that. I know the culture, you know, says uh, the, the Jewish culture, the religious culture, how you, however you want to say it. It says that this is what we 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 do here. You know what I mean? They have a lot of customs, but go beyond the customs. Jesus went beyond the customs. Yeah, he had to do customs because he he grew up in the in the culture, but yet he allowed the spirit of God to give him a deeper connection than what the the the, the ritualistic natures of the of the culture did. And that's what God is requiring of us. True relationship is just is really being able to surrender. Surrender is going to be weird. Surrender out of something. Let me surrender out of this mode and this mindset that says I have to do all of these things to connect with God. Now, am I saying is this message about telling you to stop praying and stop fasting? Absolutely not. It's it's about getting into a more. Is getting into a position that is more akin to true real right relationship with God and what it looks like or what it could look like to, to actually do that simply because Jesus provided it. He gave it back to us. He put us on uh, 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 back on a firmer foundation with with God so that we can just man, just fellowship and commune. We can be walking. We can be working. We can be doing everything and still be in constant connection with God. Do you think Adam was doing everything he was doing in that garden and still not being in constant connection. So he could have been mad. Maybe he was pruning to trees, but he was pruning trees with a constant connection. Maybe you lay pavement. You can lay pavement with a constant connection and God can lead you and guide you. You can literally pray without ceasing. You can be in a relationship without ceasing just by simply knowing that this, that it's possible. So the God perspective wants to paint you this picture that it's possible through the image of Christ, through the sacrifice of Jesus, the Christ, as the son of man who puts the son of man, which you and I are. We are son of man. We are son of man. So that just simply means that as men in the earth, we can operate in such a way that is um, the way that God intended for everything to be originally as men and women on the earth. We just have to believe it. I pray I'm not going in circles and I'm not making this um, a little difficult to understand. Uh, always allow the spirit to give you 
to, to, to settle you in your mind so you can get insight, so you can see and hear spiritually. And, then, and so that you can actually get what God has given to you, even in unconventional ways. Because the truth is, you know, the Bible says that flesh can't interpret spirit. It can not inherit spirit. So no matter who you are and how educated you are and how, how much you know scripture um, logically and reasonably, everything that you know, every illumination that comes has to come from the spirit. It has to be revealed. Even in, uh, you know, some people are really good at, um, and I just said this, but some people are really good at language so they can read something and they can really take away everything that was provided them through the letter. But that doesn't matter when it comes to the spirit. The spirit has to open you up and reveal the secrets of God, the heart of God, the nature of God in order to take you to to different heights and different dimensions and different levels. So this is one of those moments where you could think, you know, something, but you can miss the spirit because of what you think, you know, and that's how it is always. But with the God perspective, we really want to, to get what God has given us because God ain't talking for nothing. And he's and he's definitely not talking through me for nothing so prayer made sense people god perspective i'm your host pastor jamal and we will see you on the next one peace